All right, my friends. Praise the Lord. I love being here with you. I love being here with you. I'd, uh, I'm going to love it so much more to be in heaven with you. Amen. We're headed headed that way. We, we are right now in rapture season. Amen. We're in rapture season, and we praise God for that. God has his calendar. He's got his prophetic calendar, 360-day prophetic calendar. And there's really two of those that Sean's working with. Sean's working with five calendars, guys. Yeah. Uh, the calibrated one, the satanic synagogue of Satan one, and the Gregorian one, the other satanic one. Amen. And we're working through that and uh, looking at dates, looking at rapture dates. Today's a good rapture day. Today is the Feast of Wheat, man. Jubilee, we made it, 50 days, and the first day of grapes, hallelujah. So man, we're moving right along this count. We're getting close, the Lord wants this thing done. He wants us raptured, he wants those babies saved. And he's coming to save us, man, hallelujah. Clay says, hey fam, hey buddy, God, God bless you, good to have you with us. Heather says, guys, get saved. Get saved, don't go further in this Bible study then for you to know you're saved, you better get that taken care of first. And don't assume. Don't assume you're saved. Know you're saved. John said, These things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life and this life is in Jesus Christ. You can know it. Don't assume. Don't think. Make sure you know. And the way you know is the gospel. Paul's gospel. Man, Scotty Clark. That idiot, fool, retard, hellbound, just stupid, fornicating retard says the gospel of Paul died when Paul did. He doesn't know the word of God, does he? The gospel of Paul is the church age gospel. It's us. It's for us. He wants to draw all people back to religion, back to, uh, he doesn't believe in hell. Okay, he, he has changed his doctrine. He grew up a Catholic altar boy. Then he went to churches and playing drums for the churches and playing their music and all that jazz. And then he was really big into talking about the um, Revelation 12 sign. And then he preached the Revelation 12 sign on the day of the Revelation 12 sign. And he kept saying, it's a rapture, it's a rapture, it's a rapture, it's a rapture. That's what this means. It's a rapture, it's a rapture. And the rapture didn't come. And he went off the scene for about six months or maybe more and then come back and just doesn't believe in dispensation, doesn't believe in nothing, doesn't believe in God's grace. Just wicked, doesn't believe in hell. Guys, you better be solidified in your doctrine. You better be solidified in the Bible. You had better read those 10 to 20 chapters every day. And in reading the Bible, you'll come to 1 Corinthians 15. And that's where Paul tells you how to be saved. That's how we get saved right now in the days of grace, the day of the church age, right now. Pentecost, the Pentecost age. Guys, the way we know the church age hadn't completed is because Pentecost hasn't been fulfilled yet. Amen? Pentecost is fulfilled at the rapture. That's when Paul's gospel is done. It gets raptured with us, man. Amen? The Holy Spirit of God. He will never enter another individual. Okay? That was just a gift for us during the church age. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. We're so blessed. Please live in that blessing. Believe that blessing. Reach out and grab the blessing and believe. Amen. And here's how you know you're going to heaven. Jesus came here and died for you in your place. God judged him in great anger and wrath and destruction. Destroyed him on that cross. He was dead for three days. And then he rose again. Do you believe that? That Jesus traded places with you? You must believe that. That's salvation. He who knew no sin of his own became my sin, and God the Father judged him instead of me. And he paid the price in full for my salvation with his blood. Do you believe that? We encourage you to believe that. Rex says, hey, Cush, man, let's go home. Amen. Amen. Heather, God's word is eternal. All of it. The Bible is alive and relevant always, always. Tyvon. Are there any dates in August for a rapture? Well, if your Dr. Barry Awe there is, 
I don't know. We don't have any in ours. We have no, we have no August dates. What well, what we have? If the Lord doesn't rapture us tonight, if I'm I'm not looking past tonight, guys. H hello, I'm not looking past tonight. If the Lord doesn't rapture us tonight, it'll be Jesus's birthday, most likely the 29th and the 30th, two months from today. Okay, because everything culminates then. Uh, the 30th, guys. The 30th is the wheat harvest on the prophetic calendar. That's the day after Jesus's birthday, the blend, the blending of those dates. On planet Earth for about 30 minutes is three days. Three days happen on planet Earth for, for about 30 minutes. Okay, so, and so right there is perfect too. If he doesn't come get us tonight, and tonight is July 29, 30. Okay, it's already the 30th in most of the world. And uh, we're looking up, what is tonight? The 50th count. That This is when the Holy Spirit fell, guys. Now, on that prophetic calendar, on the prophetic calendar, the, the year Jesus rose from the dead, A.D. 30, that prophetic calendar, it's 2023, and that wheat harvest is the day after Jesus' birthday. Now, guys, let's picture that just for a second. I'm glad you asked that. Jesus' birthday is the 29th of September. That's when he came here and breathed our oxygen for the first time so he could sustain his life here. Made in the image of man, and he came here on his birthday. Wouldn't it be the best president uh, for him to call us up there for his birthday, his bride? Let me show you what I got. And instead of Jesus wanting a bunch of things, he's going to give you everything on that date. Real Christmas, Christmas in September. Nobody wants to honor that. Nobody wants to believe that. But boy, wouldn't that be one heck of a day. Hey guys, Heather has this link up here. Uh, everything's been refreshed. I'm gonna encourage you to click on this link right here, this very one, and you make this your official download, okay? The link she has put up there. Um, of all 530, he has cleaned it up. He's refreshed everything. And I encourage you to, Everybody, everybody listening to me, if you even have the new download, get this new freshened up download. All right. So, Jesus' birthday, guys, the 29th, and then the 30th is the 50-day count on the 360-day calendar, which is his official calendar in the Bible. Now, he uses it in the book of Daniel and Revelation. And those counts go beyond the rapture. So they're authenticated. It's an authentic count. It's an authentic calendar. It's one that's being used and usable and probably the one God's using in heaven. And if he doesn't come today, if the Lord doesn't rapture us today, September 2930, what a gift. What a blessing for Jesus. For on, on his birthday, the day he came here to earth, he receives us to heaven. You know, the, the, the great swap again. He who knew no sin came to earth and became our sin so we could be made the righteousness of him and go to heaven. On his birthday, his earthly birthday. I mean, wouldn't that be something? And that's two months from today. So we're looking at all that stuff. I, I'm not looking past tonight, man. Amen? Adrian, sister Adrian. Hi, my family. Printing in process. The codes. Amen. And and make sure you got this download here. Uh, We praise God for that. Guys, a, a physical copy, like she's talking about printing them off. That, that's a glory story right there in itself. Joe says, 930 is my grandson Jacob's 15th birthday. My birthday is October 1st, and I'll be 57. Amen. Amen. Book of life, 49 plus 1 equals 50. Glory to God, man. That's what we're talking about, ain't it? Amen. That 49th day, that seventh week on the prophetic calendar, is Jesus' birthday, and then that and one, and it will still be 49 days till you get to Baker Island, okay? And praise God, I'm so thankful that uh, we know about that. Amen. Sister Kim keeps up with that for us, the Baker Island time frame, and that's beautiful. So, hallelujah, says Evelyn. Glory to God, I say the same thing. Hallelujah. Glory be to our God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're looking for him tonight. Uh, I may just do a watch night 
tonight for anybody who wants to join us live. Everybody can join us later if the Lord hadn't raptured us. But man, I I, I just, I, I feel like the Lord's going to come get us tonight. Amen. Go to that heavenly gym, get my hair due. You know, got to get, got to get my, my glory due. Amen. Got to, got to get my God bod, glorified body, man, right from God, the glorified one. Y'all ready for that? I am so ready for that. I praise God. If you hadn't been able to uh, see my posts, make sure you look at those. They might encourage you because nobody's, nobody's seeing my stuff, guys. Nobody's seeing my stuff. Just like they're probably not seeing yours either. And I share some old thoughts from the past, you know, those, whatever they call them, your memories. And we were, we've been saying the same thing for years, man. I put one up from 11 years ago when I posted, hey, we are now on two different television stations in two different counties. And it covered three counties. Three counties got to see it. And I put that up as a witness against those counties who haven't believed, who know that we're there. The church people know we're there and they laugh and they scoff. Amen. So appreciate the prayers for us, uh, Sean and myself. Pray for Savio. He has some health issues he really needs help with. And really, really pray for Sean in this, guys. Please. Okay? I'm, I'm telling you, please pray for his health. The devil's coming strong. The devil hates him. The devil hates this book. The devil hates Shavuot. That was the giving of the book to Moses. You guys remember on that other calendar? The, the Jubilee, or the, the prophetic calendar from the birth of Jesus? Today is Adar 7. You remember what, what happened on Adar 7? Moses was born and Moses died. Big day today. This ain't just some, oh, hey, a floozy day. On all these different calendars, it's a special day today. All right? And I want you to know that. I want you to grasp the importance of that. And please like and share these nightly Bible studies. Amen. Amen. Like and share them. Pray for Sean. Take care of Sean. She puts his PayPal up there. Thank you for taking care of me. Pray for me. And we love the fact that you're all here tonight. We love the fact that you're family with me. I love you being my family. Pray for the two witnesses, Sean and his twin, the 144,000 and the tribulation saints right now. Pray for them now in faith and faith and faith. Uh, prayers outside time. And more powerful than anything. Right, right. And so pray, pray, pray in faith, believe it, man. Glory to God. Woo. Hey, why don't we go over these Bible codes? We're talking about Nibiru, guys. Nibiru, God's judgment system. And it's right overhead. Head, this is very, very important for right now. This is a right now Bible code. These codes that we're going to be looking at tonight. Okay? So let's shore up ourselves, firm up ourselves, believe, and let's cover these things. All right, the first one we're going to look at is July 7 from two years ago. We've all almost made it to two years back. We're just just a little over two years. And the closer we get, today's July 29. This is July 7. And we'll cover them. This is about Nibiru. All right. And uh, the red title is Nibiru's core is withered. That's why we can't see it with the naked eye. I have a feeling that once God's ready for everybody to see it. Have you ever been to a fire You've been out, out there at a fire, and it's really nice, man. You're sitting in your chairs, and it's just going, blowing, and fired up, and cranked. And then as it goes through the night, it kind of withers down, and almost all you can see is just some coals, just a little burning through it. But if you were to take your stick and beat it and beat off all that old soot that has grown over, the, the old ashes that has just kind of dampened the light, when you knock those old ashes off, it comes back too. That's what has happened to Nibiru, this planet. It has got an outside core that has burnt up and has gone black, but it's still just burning embers on the inside. And I have a feeling when God brings this thing by, it might be busting in some planets and whatever else and more debris and just maybe centrifugal force, you know, electromagnetic connections and boom, it might blow some of that black ash off and just glow for these people and freak them all out. All right. So we're looking at that code. She's put the link up here, July 7. And today's July 29. This is day 50 of our counting, heaven bound. Okay. And also, uh, if the Lord doesn't rapture us tonight, we look to the prophetic calendar, which guys, at the same time, when you count 50 days, uh, let's see here. 
how far away? Somebody tell me how many days it is to July uh, or August, September, September 30th. From today until September 30th, how many days that is? Rex has a note here. He says, oh, Lila's here. Hi, family. Rex says 50 is 729 and the last day of summer is 921. And that's day 104. And 104 is big because of the Sombrero Galaxy. The seven days later on nine, hey, Aaron says 63 days. Okay. So that's more than 50 days, isn't it? So that'll be in the olive, olive count. Jesus's birthday is in olives. Jesus's birthday uh, and a day. We will have covered all three edibles by the 29th and 30th. Okay, that's just a great note, and thank you, sister. Uh, Rick says, uh, 921 is day 104, and seven days later on 929, that's Jesus' birthday, is day 111. That looks like a trident to me. Amen? The year, uh, seven-year anniversary of Revelation 12 is 923. And on day 106, Rabbi Kaduri died. He's 106. He died at 106 years of age. So all these numbers, guys, the numbers don't lie. The numbers go together and nothing is willy nilly with God. Okay. And so we understand that. So today is our 50 day count. We started counting the first day of grapes, the 50th day of wheat. The wheat is being put into the barn, sickle to the wheat. Amen. And uh, so tonight, guys, guys, don't look past tonight. Don't look past tonight. Okay, everybody is set up. You've heard what the Russians are doing. They just sent out three more submarines and they're loaded with nukes. Today's news. Now, I don't know how long ago they sent them out. This guy that does this, he's usually two or three days back. Okay, and they're well on their way being positioned where they are. They kept saying the Black Sea, the Black Sea, the Black Sea. Okay, great. They're going to position themselves to where they can nuke some towns from those submarines. Because we know Poseidon's already dropped off and loaded. There are drones and they are out here ready to take out the east coast of the United States of America. That very well could be tonight. Don't look past tonight, guys. Don't you be silly and look past tonight. Heather said, did you say 111? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. And that's Hebrews 11, 1, 1, 1, 1. And that opposes the trident. That opposes destruction. And that's what Poseidon wants to bring us. The devil wants to bring us. You know, they always showed him with the three-pronged pitchfork. Hey, here comes the devil, the red-tailed devil and horns and all that jazz. Uh, Poseidon's that same character. Poseidon is Satan. All right, man. Thank you guys for those wonderful notes. That 63 is a wonderful count to remember, guys. Okay? 63 days from today is the 30th of September, which is the 50th day count on God's 360-day prophetic calendar. Hallelujah. Because today is Elul, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Nisan 9, the 9th of Nisan, the first month, ninth day of the month on Jesus' prophetic calendar is today. All right? And on the prophetic calendar from the birth is 8 or 7, the day Moses died. You don't think today's a big day, guys? Come on. Sean is Moses. Sean goes missing up in the mountain. With the rest of us. Hallelujah. Joe says, I just saw a Russian naval flag with a white horse in the center. I can post it later if we're still here. Amen. That's very good. Very good. And <clears throat> that's just decoy as well, isn't it? Because everybody says, oh, the Russians are the white horse. The Russians introduced the white horse. The white horse is Barack Obama. It's very telling. That I would love to see that pic, dude. All right, guys. Let's look at this Bible code. She's put the link up here. July 7, 2022. And it's about Nibiru. It says, Nibiru, the core, is withered. That's why it's all black. That's why you can't see it with a naked eye. And then they keep it all covered up with chemtrails. Let's see what Sean has to say. The reason why Nibiru is nearly invisible to us is because of its withered, cooled core. Uh, according to an ex-NASA employee who studied and tracked it for years, Nibiru, approximately 47,000 mile diameter, which is four to five times the size of Earth, is a blazing hot ball of fire giving off sparkles of red iron oxide. And that's a dust cloud. Everybody is getting red dust in their bird feeders and in their ponds and around their water lines and on their cars and have been for about three or four years now. Okay, God ain't playing. And it's coming at us, dog. 
and you better recognize this, how close everything is. And we're talking about a right now Bible prophecy because Nibiru is bringing all of God's judgments, man. And it's going to start out most effectively with that six seal earthquake. The horses are the horses. Obama through the rest. And then the fifth seal is everybody dead who died from these four horses. And then the sixth seal is that great earth spin. Boom, the polar uh, reversal. And that's caused by this big magnet that is four to five times larger than earth. Keep reading. It's a blazing hot ball of fire giving off sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles. And the news will say, oh man, all this dust from the Sahara storm has made its way all the way across the Atlantic. And now we're in that dust. Uh, that dust is from Nibiru, guys. It's a lie. Don't go with the lie on this. You go with Jesus on this. Okay, that's Nibiru dust. It's toxic. It's poisonous. It's four to five times larger than the size of Earth. It's a blazing hot ball of fire giving off sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles, approximately uh, 500,000, you know, half a million. It has a 500-mile-wide asteroids. These things are big, 500 miles. That's a pretty big asteroid orbiting this particular the, – the planet. There are seven of these planets in this system, okay, seven heads – of this dragon. And the tail is a million miles long and it has trillions of meteorites in it. It's about two million miles wide, this tail coming off the system, and it's just dragging through, through the earth as it moves. It's bringing in all the metal objects. God says, I can use that one. Oh, here's one. Boom. Let's get that one sucked into this debris tail of this thing, this magnetic hull. And it's dragging them mag magnetically all the way through space and until they get here to Earth. And God says, I got some usage for those. And he's going to put it to them. Hey, why don't you get saved? Why don't you miss all this stuff and quit listening to those liars that say, no, God has to purify us on Earth and then he'll rapture us. He's doing that now if you're walking in the Word, you idiot. All they who live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer persecution. Why don't you start living godly instead of worldly and fleshly like you do? I'm just talking to the modern average Christian who's most likely below average. God's sick of it, man. There's persecution. You just start following the Lord and start posting stuff on your page instead of all that idiocy that you post. Okay? And then continuing on, Sean says, this code describes the effects of Nibiru on Earth as it approaches. These effects can already be seen now, and they have been for years, man. Uh, as the horizon of blood, the anomaly of Earth's magnetic field, these will only increase as it approaches closer. The blood moon is due to the sun being eclipsed by Nibiru, as prophesied. So Nibiru is going to come in, eclipse the sun, and give us those blood red moons. Also, is going to be a concentrated um, concentration of this dust, and it'll make everything red. You know, like those. Uh, Canadian fires did, how they covered up the sun and made it look blood moon. The moon at night is like, we weren't supposed to have a blood moon. Yeah, but that's the smoke from these fires. That's what the dust from this system will do. And that moon will, up there will be blood red. And I put up a one of my posts I made today was 16 years ago this weekend, the blood moon tetrad was introduced to the world. The discovery. Here's a here's a discovery, and boom. Then it happened 10 years ago, 2014 and 15, on both Passover and Sukkot of 2014 and Passover and Sukkot of 2015. God has been showing us these signs, telling us what's going on, man. And that's what got a lot of people's attention. And maybe some of you listening, your attention was gotten when you learned about these blood, blood moons, man. Amen. What does Revelation 6, 12, 14 say? John said, man, I, I beheld, and then, man, good night, and the open the sixth seal, watching Jesus. He said, I'm sitting there keeping a close eye on Jesus there, sitting on his throne. He's already opened five of these dudes. Now he's popping open this sixth seal on this roll, this scroll, the title deed to earth. And he says, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. And God's going to bring Satan down. 
right here around this time, right at mid-trib is when it really happens. But the stars will fall, the literal stars will fall, and some of those stars are Satan himself. God's imprisoned them. And they're going to be falling from the heavens. God's kicking them out of outer space. They've had their time there. They were in the third heaven. God kicked them out of there when they rebelled. And God's about to kick them out of the second heaven. And that's around this time. And the stars fell and the dragon fell. Satan fell and he brought with his tail, his swooping tail. Whoom, he brought down a third of the stars with him, man. A third of the angels, a third of the wicked rebellious ones. And the stars of heaven fell unto earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she's shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. They're trying to hide Nibiru with these chemtrails. God says, you ain't hiding my Nibiru, and he's going to roll their chemtrails straight back so everybody can see what's coming at them, man. You talk about the f fear being heightened. Oh, dude. Rex says, magma is very hot under Yellowstone, simmering because Nibiru is near. It's right. It's got everything ignited. You're right, bro. And it's got all the cald calderas lit up around the world, man. Italy's on fire. Everybody's on fire. South America, everybody's on fire. And what it does is when it heats up, it expands and it causes all those cracks and fissures around the world and sinkholes and nobody's understanding what's going on. Is got the Olympics. <laughs> Olympics. Arr, arr, arr. That's another thing that really needs to excite us about tonight. Because the judgment seat of Christ is likened to the Olympic stand. Of rewards same time is everybody paying attention everybody's looking at the olympics down here not caring about the olympics up in heaven the bema seat the reward stand come on man focus focus come on get your eyes on heaven and off of earth let's do this people amen praise god and heaven departed as a scroll as it rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places that's going to be this big when the world turns remember that ritual Remember that soap pop as the world turns. That's what this is all about. They were they had everybody thinking it was like this. Oh, it's turning on its axis. The daily. This is what happens in the world. It's actually this when the world turns. All right, let's look at this code. God's word in His dialect. The skip is well. Let's bring that up, man. Open that dude up. The skip is thirty-eight twenty-three. Thirty-eight twenty-three. That means from the top down, and it doesn't cover the whole. North to south, but most of it, starting in just above the middle of the page. All right, here's what it says. The Nibiru's core is withered, and we know why. Just like that burning fire, and it's kind of the smoke has gone out, and it's cooling. If it were on fire and lit up, what's going to happen? The closer it gets to our sun, they're going to interact with each other. The sun's going to get hotter, and so is Nibiru. You talk about some hot, hot... Uh, remember how, how it... The sun scorches everybody, and they're cursing God still. That's what's happening. God's servant is doing his job, and he's lighting up, and he's getting fired up, man. Nibiru's core is withered. Blood moon. He's going to cause the blood moon with the eclipse and with its dust. Nibiru is like a cloud to cover the earth in the end of days. And there's that dust cloud, and Nibiru itself will be making some darkness when it eclipses Eclipses the sun, eclipses all the stars. People won't be able to see the stars in heaven the closer it gets because it'll be hiding those, eclipsing them. And they call it occulting, putting them in the dark. Behold the dragon. Horizon of blood, right here at the end of days. Boom. Let's read that. Oh, well, he's got a note here. Please note that Ezekiel 38.16's connection with Nibiru and the Antichrist Obama. Gog. All those hailstones of fire are going to be coming down on its way back out. It's going to come down, and it appears. Now, right now, I'm, I'm saying it appears. It's going to make its orbit, and boom, boom, boom. We got all these trumpet judgments, everything. And then it looks like it takes a pause. And Obama and everybody thinks everything's just fine over there in Israel. And then it makes its loop on around this way, and it starts coming back up the other side of Earth after its orbit. And boom, then it starts dropping off the rest of these stuff. The bold judgment. Bam, 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 bam. And that all happens at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, man. The Schumann resonance, the electromagnetic fields in flux cause aches and pains of the body. And they're going off right now. There was three major explosions off of the sun. One was a cannibal explosion where an explosion came out and then a second one <laughs> overtook it and made it larger and bigger and faster. 
okay? And those can take out your power lines, can take out your power grid, your communications, all that jazz, okay? So we're at that time, guys. And it's going to be so sad when our, when our power goes out and I can't talk to you and do these Bible studies, but I'm praying we can. I'm praying that we'll be able to continue until the rapture, okay? But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. They're going to kill the communications. The first thing the enemy always wants to do is destroy the communications, and then they'll bomb the hell out of you, okay? Kill your children, rip them apart. But praise God, there will be none of those that are of the human variety. God's going to call all those away in this rapture. Glory to God. Ezekiel 32, 2. Thou art as a dragon of the seas, that its gush uh, forth with your rivers, and its trouble the waters, and with your feet and the foul and, and they foul the river, man. And that's what this uh, Leviathan, Satan thing is going to do. And Satan is referred to as this Nibiru. And this Nibiru is pointed at as the red dragon as well. Yes, they normally happen to me when the sun's out. Yeah, it, 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 it'll mess and fry, dude. And it's going on right now. I promise you it's happening right now. That electromagnetic mind warp, okay, along with the chemicals. The frequency is the chemicals, and the what we're talking about is radiation. Because our radiation protectors are down, all that radiation is getting through, man. And all the sensitive ones right now are getting destroyed. And you can go online and find all the conversations. Amen? All right. Why don't we look at another one? So that was Nibiru, and it's on the way. Let me turn this up, man. I got a big boy this thing, old boy this thing. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. There we go. All right. This is July 10. July 10. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. This is July 10. And this is also about Nibiru, the wandering star, the harmful vapor of bitterness declared wisdom. Okay, you and I have the wisdom. We know it's coming in. God told us it. Whether you've ever seen these uh, weather cameras or not, you've read the Bible and you know it's coming in. You read the Bible code. <laughs> The pastors aren't preaching this in church because this is in the Bible code. Now, they'll read the 21 judgments of Revelation and never ask the question because they don't care about truth. Never ask the question, what is the origin of all these judgments? Where are they coming from? They don't ask that. If they would, they'd say, Lord, 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 can you tell me where this is coming from? God would direct them to these Bible codes and they would know it's all Nibiru, God's judgment system coming in. But they don't want to know the truth. They don't care about the origin. They just need to get through this sermon so I can get my paycheck and I can go fishing on Monday. Amen? All right, here's what it says. This is Sean's commentary to us, July 10, 2022. The Bible describes planets as wandering stars to whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. We see that in Jude 1, 13. That's a good number, that 113. Nibiru's fire movement is dimmed because of the withered cooled core that we just talked about in that last code, the previous code. This harmful vapor's bitterness is due to wormwood, which is among the debris tail. Now, that wormwood is a comet that is stuck. It's a slush ball. That's what a comet is. Uh, ice, freezing cold. Uh, was it 349 below zero? Something like that. Three, 200, 249 below zero. I forget the temperature. It's incredibly cold. And it's a slush ball, and it's filled mostly with water. It's all toxic, and it's got a bunch of uh, space debris in it, small meteors and things like that. So this is a deadly weapon, and it's coming in. And we know about that from the third trumpet. The third trumpet is is this uh, wormwood. It's going to bitter all the water. It's going to create a massive tidal wave. It's, I mean, dude, tidal wave after tidal wave, water destruction. Hey, you know what also makes this a great day for rapture tonight? You guys remember on the first day of creation, God created light? That's today. Mon Monday's the first day of creation. Remember what happened on the second day? God divided the waters from the waters. You know, like a water event. Don't look past tonight, okay? Don't look past tonight. Remember, we have discussed Satan hates Tuesdays. I don't know why, but he does. Water, 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 water event. The second day of creation. Monday's the first, Tuesday's the second. And here we are at a Monday going into a Tuesday. And many places, most places on earth are already into Tuesday. And if you're looking at the Jewish calendar, you've been there for quite some time. Amen? 
Keep reading. This harmful vapor of bitterness is due to wormwood, which is among the debris tail of Nibiru. It will release toxic gases, contaminating one-third of the Earth's fresh water supply. Amen. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own. That's that Jude 113. Reserve the blackness of the darkness forever. And here's the code. God's word in his dialect. Let's bring up that skip count. It is at an amazing skip of negative 241, 796. 241, 796. 241, almost a quarter million characters between each skip spelling out this phrase. The Wandering Star. Our God's awesome, guys. This is God's signature. This is His finger. This is His word for you today. Please download that link that she put up here today. Heather has put up that link. Download that thing and you familiarize yourself. We have the, the last 10 codes have been added here. So check that out. When did the flood happen? About 4,000 years ago, 4,200 4, years ago. All right. And so here's the translation. The wandering star, the harmful vapor of bitterness, declared wisdom to everyone that had knowledge and understanding. Nibiru's fire movement is dimmed. You and I have that knowledge and understanding on this side. Wise men have knowledge and understanding. Fools don't. Fools won't believe in the finished work. There's a bunch of people out there who know Nibiru's coming in. They look at the pictures. They share the pictures. They hate chemtrails. They're truthers, but they don't go all the way in truth to Jesus, who is truth personified. He's truth universal. He's truth all over his creation. He is truth. And anything that opposes him, you live in a lie. You may call yourself a truther, but you're a liar. And so many people understand everything about Nibiru. I mean, there are a million of these followers, guys. A million of them who believe the Anunnaki and uh, th there are creators, the space creators, and they're coming back and they're going to clean everything up and lie, 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 and lie some more, baby. And what does this say? Hopefully the people who are stupid now, who claim to be wise, they profess themselves to be wise, but they're fools. After we're raptured, maybe they can get some wisdom and understanding and realize what's really going on. And this is God's hand. And the Nibiru was created to be God's judgment, man. Amen. Uh, wrote the world's in collision references the papyrus in the high priest of Egypt documented the plagues of Egypt. The skies are red. The waters turn bitter. Amen. Amen. Same event happens every five to 600 years. They've just lied to us about that. Okay. And then stitching comes along and he lies about it and says it only comes every 3,600 years. And oh, here it comes again. So all these people who profess themselves to be wise, who do believe in Nibiru, who do believe in chemtrails, who can see a whole lot more than a lot of stupid, freaking retarded, spirit-filled Christians. And yet they're still stupid. They're still unwise. And God says this here is coming. God's using this servant of his, Nibiru, his judgment system, to make some folks wise up. And many of them won't wise up. The Christians won't wise up before the rapture. It's kind of almost too late for this. But maybe many of the people left behind when Sean's down there preaching in the streets. When he's pointing to it, see that thing right there, guys? You'll open up my book, turn to my book, page whatever, whatever, whatever. And this whole section starting there, you'll see a bunch of stuff on Nibiru. We talked about it on that side. Now, are you going to believe on this side or what? And a lot of those folks will become wise and un have understanding. Okay, okay, okay. This is Jesus and this is his destructive force. This is his servant of destruction. Okay. So the translation, God's word in his dialect, the wandering star, the harmful vapor of bitterness declared wisdom. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes to everyone that had knowledge and understanding. And this thing will teach knowledge and understanding. Sean and the other guy will be down on the street along with the 144,000 witnesses teaching knowledge and understanding. Wisdom, are you going to believe it? And seeing is believing, and many of these people will see uh, not only Nibiru, but the results of Nibiru. The earth tilt, the pole shift, and all these rocks flying at them, mingled with blood, right? Fire mingled with blood. They'll start believing then, because it'll match up word for word with the plain text and the coded text. Hey, Carl, it's good to see you, bro. Amen. Habakkuk 3.8. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou hast, uh, that thou didst ride upon, and thy horses and thy chariots and salvation? 
God, are you mad at the waters? Why are you destroying all the waters? Because he wants men to wake up in understanding. They wouldn't wake up in the plain text when it said it already, when it warned it already. So now he's going to come and physical destroy everything, physically. Psalm 712 in the Tanakh, the Old Testament Hebrew. God is a righteous judge, yea, a God that hath indignation every day, Selah. I want you to read that again. God is ticked off every day, Joel Olstein, you freaking idiot. All you pansy Christians, love, 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 he's love. Oh, quit sounding so mean. A true preacher of God represents God, and God is ticked off at the wicked every day. So when the preacher comes on, he needs to represent God being ticked off at the wicked. And those of you that have believed in faith, Jesus Christ, he's taken your sin. You have been freed from all that. And he's not angry with you. You need to quit acting like sinners, though, with whom he is livid. Quit following their ways. Turn off your TV. Shut off your smut, your sin, your selfishness, and turn on Jesus. You ain't got much time left if he's coming tonight. You really ain't got no time. And we're encouraging you to give Jesus your all, man. Okay? Let's read that again, and we'll go on to the next one. Translation. God's word in his dialect at almost a half, a, almost a quarter million. It is, well, yeah, 250,000. Yeah, this is 241,796. 241,796 between each character. And it says this. God's word in his dialect, code given to us by Sean Mitchell. The wandering star, the harmful vapor of bitterness, declared wisdom to everyone that had knowledge and understanding. Nibiru's fire movement is dimmed. God's about to light it up, man. When he rolls back that scroll and shows everybody, hey, 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 gave information to Hezbollah about Israel strikes. Okay. Sweet. All right, let's look at the next one, guys. This is July 14, 2022. July 14, 2022. This code, this is Sean's commentary. This code describes the third trumpet judgment of Revelation. And what is the third trumpet? Wormwood. Uh, see here. That font is small, ain't it, guys? You blow that up. Negative 1124. 1124. That means it goes from the bottom up, and man, it looks like it runs. Yeah, nor are south to north, man. All right, here's what Sean has to say about it. This code describes the third trumpet judgment of Revelation 8, revealing more details about Wormwood. These details are consistent with the characteristic properties of the comet, not an asteroid. Comet, comet, comet. Wormwood is a comet, not this thing that Paul Begley and... Oh, all these guys, Apophysis or whatever. He wrote that book, then he dies. Tom Horn. It's not an asteroid, fools. This is two years old. This is two years old, and for two years, we have been told directly right into our face, eyeball to eyeball from God, God's word in his dialect, saying, guys, this ain't no asteroid. It's a comet. It's a slush ball. And... Comets are frequently called dirty snowballs because they consist mostly of water, ice, and peppered with rocky debris and frozen gases. Unlike asteroids, which are chunks of rock and minerals, comets have tails, jets of gas that, that's what we see, we always see that comet tail, and it's jets of gas shooting out the front or back of the thing, man, right? Um, let's see here. Open that up a bit. Jets of gas and vapor emitted by the high-energy particle stream coming from the sun. The Crimson Comet, that's the title, the Crimson Comet, Wormwood, is a biological weapon that God made. It's a biological weapon. God's got his own biological weapons, guys. He laughs at yours. He laughs at your biological weapons. His will smoke you. His will smoke your laboratories. His will smoke your arsenal. And all you got to do is go take a drink of water and his biological weapon done killed you. After Comet smashes the earth in the southern sea. Keep reading. 
This crimson comet, Wormwood, is a biological weapon that God uses to judge the Earth dwellers. That's people who love Earth so much. Oh, I just love Earth. Oh, Earth is all about me. Oh, football season's coming up. I love it. Oh, the fall season, those colors. Oh, don't even care. It's Jesus' birthday, September 29th. Don't care nothing about that. Don't care nothing about Tishri 1 being his birthday because Christmas is coming. I don't need his birthday. I got the Antichrist birthday. Let's celebrate us some Christmas, y'all. What you gonna give me for gifts? Translation, God's word in his dialect. The kosher shofar. That's gonna be the third trumpet. God's trumpeteers, they're kosher, and the trumpets themselves are kosher. Set aside for God's use. And the waters of crimson wormwood as the reason which is my glory. God says all this, every one of these judgments are for my glory. And that's why you and I shout and sing the glory of God. He does all things. Well, kill them, Lord, kill them. Destroy all these earth dwellers, all these earth loving retards, kill them. You and I, like Abraham, true men and women of faith, we love heaven. We walk earth, but we walk with the Lord in faith. And we, we just meditate all day long about heaven. Give me heaven, give me heaven. Amen, right? Or are you an earth dweller and you just think about going to the amusement park next Saturday? Everything earthy. That old people's trip from our church, we're all going to get on that van. We're going to complain and whine and bellyache and murmur and talk about other people. Then we're going to get out and eat some rolls. They're going to throw us some rolls. We're going to eat them, finish off our plate, get back in the van, talk negatively about everybody, and never bring God the glory one time. And these people walked with Jesus for the last 65 years. What's wrong with our church today? They love earth. They don't care nothing about heaven. They don't care about his word. They just like Everything here, look at that beauty, look at that over there. And never care about the things of heaven, things in the book, man. We're calling you over to that. Brent says, Dollywood is flooded just before Jesus comes. I love it. Tomorrow, Tuesday, it's Tuesday in most of the world right now, is the water event of creation, it's dividing the waters from the waters. And remember what's the, the 30th of... Um, September, that's a Tuesday as well. That th 30th is a Monday going into that Tuesday. Same day. That's why God does all this stuff. The counting of the Omer, counting of the days, counting of the weeks is what it actually is. In, in Leviticus 23, we're counting the weeks. A wormwood is not Apophis. Apophis is a meteorite. Wormwood is a comet. Good question. These fools, these liars that wrote these books and all this, uh, 2029 is when that's supposed to hit. You freaking idiots. This thing is going to hit way before 2029. It's the third trumpet, man. Amen. Good question. Sturgis was flooded too in a hailstorm damaging thousands of bikes. I love it. I love it. When are they going to open their eyes and wake up? Amen. All right. Here's the translation. The kosher shofar, which is the third trumpet, and the waters of crimson wormwood as the reason, which is my glory, says God. Wormwood is a liquid ball, and that's what we're describing right now, Carlos. Wormwood is a liquid ball, mostly. Whoa, says God. Yeshua, Nabooru, Isaiah the prophet, God is the gift of Yeshua for me. 444. This wonderful book. Sean Mitchell, the prophet of God. Amen. The 444 is God's gift to us, and he's warned us all about this. And it's a good timing on that question, Carlos, because God says it right here. Wormwood is a liquid ball. This is God telling us this. Okay, This, this is the Bible code in God's dialect at that skip of 1124 negative, going from the bottom to top. And all those red letters that it has that amazing skip says this. The kosher shofar trumpet and the waters of the crimson wormwood as the reason which is my glory. Why is all this happening, Lord? Because it's God's glory. He's coming to kill the wicked. He's coming to destroy all you earth-loving fools, man. And God says right here in this translation, The kosher shofar, the third trumpet, and the waters of the crimson wormwood as the reason which is my glory. Wormwood is a liquid ball, Tom Horn. Tom Horn, I know you're dead, so I'm talking to all the people that 
now represent you, you're dead wrong. And you keep talking about that. You keep preaching against God. And we've had this for over two years and a month. Produced. God's saying this ain't no meteorite. This ain't no solid rock. This ain't no asteroid. This is a slush ball comet, mostly water. And it continues on. Wormwood is a liquid ball, mostly. Whoa. Yeshua. Nibiru. Isaiah, the prophet. God is the gift of Yeshua for me. 444. Is God your gift? Is Yeshua your gift? Is that what you love and you long for every day? Is Jesus himself, God himself? You'll find him in this book. You'll find him from the prophet Sean Mitchell presenting us these 530 codes. Download the ebook and get busy in meditating. Okay, she's put the link up here. We'll put it up here again if we have to. For you that come in late, she'll, she'll have that code up here for you. All right. Isaiah, here's that portion that God mentions in Isaiah. This is Isaiah 2, verses 20 and 21. In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which, he, which they made, each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. That means in the caves. That's where moles and bats live. They're going to throw them in the caves. These things are worthless, these idols. They're going to throw them in there to go into the clefts of the rock into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. Hmm. Wormwood. Hmm. Nibiru. Why did he do all this? For the glory of his majesty. For his glory. Amen. She's got that link up here, guys. Download that thing. Download that book. 530 codes and 835 pages. Woo! Glory to God. Go to the clefts of the rocks and to the tops of the ragged rocks for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. The brewer's going to do that. That's his messenger to do that. Also, Isaiah 24, 20. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Then it flips. Do you guys know that it's reeling to and fro right now, right? John Trazik always shows the wobble, how it's wobbling. Ooh. Wobbling, wobbling, wobbling till it flips. Amen? It's about to flip, dude. And the earth's going to be removed like a cottage, a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. God's going to do some super flippage. He's going to take out some coastline. He's going to redraw the landlines. And it's going to be mostly water. All right, let's look at that. Code again, and then we'll head on to the next one. Translation. God's word in his dialect, the kosher shofar, the third trumpet, and the waters of the crimson wormwood as the reason which is my glory, says God. Wormwood is a liquid ball, mostly. Whoa, that means warning of death, warning of judgment, warning of the cursing. Yeshua Nibiru. Nibiru is the glory of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Isaiah the prophet, read him, read him, read him. You'll see this there in Isaiah the prophet. We also see it, Isaiah, in Chronicles, talking to Hezekiah about the sundial. Nibiru did that too. Turning the sundial back 10 degrees, that was Isaiah. And Hezekiah was his son-in-law, married to Isaiah's daughter, Hephzibah. It's all in Isaiah, guys. Isaiah is one of the good ones. You better read it. You better know it. You better hide it. You better... Put it in the deepest recesses of your mind and your heart and share it with other folks, will you? And then read Jeremiah and Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel, read them all. Read that revelation, familiarize yourself. Join this nightly Bible study. We hope to teach you, encourage you along the way. Isaiah the prophet, God is the gift of Yeshua for me, 444. Hallelujah. God's our inheritance, guys. Is that not good enough or do you need earthly things. Let's look at the next one. Praise God. This is Nibiru Eclipse from July 15th, 2022. Sean's commentary. As Nibiru approaches from the horizon, and see, it's right behind the sun, and it's hidden by the chemtrails. Okay? And so they know when, when they're spraying, when they go into panic mode, spraying the chemtrails, they're hiding Nibiru. That's what that's about. Okay? They can make an absolutely clear day 
when it when our so, quote unquote blue skies, clear skies, quote unquote, are out, they can make it absolute overcast in two hours, and they do. They they use frequency vibration to undulate the the spray that they sprayed to get it spread out flat and faster. You can watch it. It looks like washboards in the clouds. That's frequency. And that's what will affect many people who are sensitive to those frequencies. It'll give them headaches. It'll give them body aches. It'll hurt them. It's just crazy. Okay. All right. Sean's commentary continues. Nibiru approaches the horizon. It'll completely eclipse the sun, turning the moon into blood, causing the stars to fall to the earth. While a great earthquake, unlike anything that anybody has ever seen, is going to shake and rock the entire planet. God's wrath is coming. And you were warned. Take the warnings, guys. Take the warnings on this side, okay? Because Sean will be on the other side verbally shouting out these warnings, okay? Take them on this side and believe and be saved and go with us. Place your faith in Jesus Christ alone, of Calvary alone. Don't trust in yourself in any way on the front end or the back end for your salvation. It's all Jesus. You just believe that. And then the Holy Spirit of God comes inside. He seals himself in until the day of rapture. Believe this and be saved. Once saved, always saved. And here's the code. God's word in his dialect. At the skip of 100,176. 100,176. 100,176 between each of those red letters spelling Nibiru Eclipse. God's word in his dialect. And here's what it says. Code by Sean Mitchell. God's word in his dialect. Nibiru Eclipse. The trembling of all the living. The serpent failed. Now, guys, why don't you please believe that on this side? The serpent hasn't fallen yet physically, but he did at Calvary. He's failed for 2,000 years, 1,994 years. On God's prophetic clock, 1,993 years. I really believe that's an important clock. It's 2,023 on God's prophetic 360-day clock after Calvary, after resurrection. Remember where he was talking about that in Daniel? And he, the prince would be cut off, but not for himself. I think we also count from there. And I think that's a very important count because that takes us to Jesus' birthday and the wheat harvest, a day apart from each other. Very vital. Monday, the first day of the week, into Tuesday, the second day of the week, the water event day. If we make it past tonight, that looks like a great one. Amen. All right. So that, that's God's word in his dialect at that amazing skip, 100,000, and we said, what, 176. Nibiru eclipse, the trembling of all the living, the serpent failed. Satan is fallen. God already sees the future as past, guys. Go with him. Have the faith of God. He's placed it in you. He's given you the word, and you just believe it. That's what that means. God said it. Okay, that, that's it then. It's good as done. I'm not going to mill it around. I'm not going to reason it over. I'm not going to mull. I'm not going to chew on that for a while. I'm going to believe it. When God says it, you believe it, dude, or you're a fool. The serpent failed. Satan has fallen. You were warned. You were warned. You were warned. And what does Lamentations 2.22 say? Guys, read Lamentations. That's the United States of America. The destruction, and then the, the people over on the other side in Israel will be saying this in about three and a half years. Okay, America now, um, all the Jews in Israel in three and a half years, they, they will be lamenting and saying these same things. 222, you called as in the day of an appointed feast. My terrors on every side, and there was no one who escaped or survived in the day of the Lord's anger. These feasts are important. Leviticus 23, come to know them. Jesus has fulfilled the first three himself. He's about to fulfill the fourth one, which is a Pentecost rapture. Pentecost harvest. Pentecost has always been a harvest season. And when he planted the church, that's not a harvest. That's a planting. That happened 1,993 years ago. And he planted the church. Now he's about to harvest the church. It's rapture time, says Josh. Amen, buddy. We're looking. We're looking tonight. And here's another verse. Isaiah again. Read Isaiah. Read Isaiah. Read it fast. Get the audio Bible on and just let it flow. And listen well. 
Listen well as the narrator is giving you that story. Read along with your eyeballs. Use all the senses that you can, your eyes and your ears, okay? And you take it in. Here's Isaiah 34, 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. Ugh. And the dust thereof into brimstone. That's what's coming across the, the oceans when they say, oh, that's the Sahara dust coming. That's Nibiru dust coming, and it's toxic, and it's deadly, and it's killing folk. And it makes your preacher here cough. It makes me sick. It makes me, I'm very sensitive to it. And God's done that for a show and tell, just like Ezekiel. Your, your preacher here preaching these Bible codes of Sean Mitchell, crying out to you on this side in wisdom and understanding. Please have that same wisdom and understanding and believe. Believe these Bible codes. Believe what's happening. And this is Isaiah, guys. This is 2,700 years ago. Okay? And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become a burning pitch. 2,700 years ago, and we're right here at it. It's right above your head, kid. You better believe, 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 believe. Heather says, amen. Carlos says, amen. Praise God. Guys, I love you dearly. Let's pray. Lord, we are so appreciative of your word. We are so thankful for Sean. Lord, bless him. Bless his health. Touch him. Keep that devil away from him. I pray you'll just heal his body and uh, keep him from having those episodes that he has once in a while and just keep him raised up. Keep him in strength. Keep him in good spirits. And I pray you'll just preserve him and protect him like that. We love our brother. We love your prophet. We love your man. And we fear you in this. We fear you in your word. We love your word. Plain text and the coded text. And Lord, we want to believe. And I pray for everybody here listening to me. They'll believe immediately. And uh, be people, men and women of understanding and wisdom. We want to be that. And we pray for wisdom. We pray for wisdom in our lives. And we pray you come tonight. We are looking for you to come tonight. This is a great night for your arrival, man. It's a great night for me to get out of here. It's a great night. All of us world haters, oh, we'd love you to come get us out of here tonight, man. Extract us from this poop pile, this dunghill, and save us, Lord. It'd be so awesome to be in glory, and we can't wait. We can't wait. We love your timing. We love your perfection. We embrace you in all of it. We praise your name right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the land of the living, amen. Amen. Uh, Evelyn says, hallelujah. Clay says, the enemy has been attacking me. He knows his time is up. If we have another days, let's bring more on the ark. Amen. Amen. And what you say, 63 days. Amen. Uh, if it's not tonight, guys, I, I just can't see it going past the 63 days. Jesus' birthday and all that. Now, God can do what he wants. He's going to do what he wants. Joe says, Amen. Ben, amen, praying for JB, Sean, and everyone in this group every night. Man, appreciate that, brother. Sister Aaron says, amen. Sean says, amen. Good to see you, brother. Gordy says, amen. Josh says, amen. Heather, guys, make sure Heather, Josh, and, um, uh, let's see, Kush. Kush does it. The three of them, that they put up the daily counts, the daily things, what's going on. Be sure to look at that and share those, okay? Amen. Carlos says, thank you, brother, for your teaching. God bless you and your family. Amen. Appreciate that. Clay, I'm so ready. Ready, ready, ready. Cush, amen. There he is. There he is. He's the one that put that picture together of me that I posted today. The glorified Johnny with hair and a healthy body. Amen. <laughs> with that that g glory hairdo. Amen. Glory by glory hairdo. I appreciate you guys. I, I love all your ministries. I love all your ministries. Like I said, check out Cush, check out Heather, and check out Josh. Get their daily counts. And then, of course, all the other folks, man, um, who share Aaron, Gary, Yolanda. Yolanda's got some great stuff on Salvation by Grace, guys. You don't want to miss her stuff. And because she has gotten a hold of it. It has gotten a hold of her, and she knows the importance of it. And they're sharing down there in South Africa where everything is illegal about Jesus teaching the truth. I, I couldn't say that Obama's a fag down there. Obama's a fag. It's truth. They don't like truth down there. They'll shut it off. They'll shut it down. 
And uh, Brent says, amen, brother. Amen, guys. All right. Well, I love you. I'm going to I'm gonna try to be on here at midnight, Central Time. That is uh, three and a half hours. So if you want to join us, join us, man. We'll just talk. Nothing scheduled that I know of. We'll just talk and look for the Lord to come and talk about, get your ideas ready. Uh, why would he come tonight? Why would he not come tonight? Is he going to come tonight? He's going to come sometime. We're looking for him to come. We know it's going to be during the Feast of Pentecost. That's what we're in, ain't it? We just come across our first jubilee today. Jubilee today. Amen. And so we know there's three jubilees and another six-day count, a week count. 22 total weeks, 22, like revelation and light. Amen. For real? See if I can be on at midnight. Praise God, guys. We're invited. Come on. It'll be uh, Central Standard Time. Right now, the time is 8.33-ish. So less than uh, less than three and a half hours. Amen. Brew that coffee. <laughs> Amen. I got to talk Mimi into that. She don't like me drinking coffee late. But maybe, maybe if I'm a real good boy, I might be able to do some of that. I love you guys. God bless. And we'll see you in a little bit.